always afraid. People misunderstand the meaning of bravery. They think if you are brave, then there's no fear. But the truth is, bravery is being afraid and still doing something anyway. Hello and welcome to the Come Alive podcast. I'm your host, Mehemri Chandani. And I'm super excited to start this journey completing 50 episodes with five wonderful women. So she's born in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. She's most known for her athletic feats. She's the first female Saudi to climb Mount Everest. And she's also the youngest Arab to climb the seven summits. Living curiously, breaking the myth about Saudi women and challenging the status quo. We are thrilled to have her on our show and hear her story. Please allow me to welcome Raha Muharak. What a lovely intro. Thank you, Meher. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Happy to be here. Always happy. When it's you, my pleasure. So, uh, so the first time I understood or rather felt self-love from someone, it was you. I think we I'm met. <laughs> I think we met when you moved here. Uh, to no, live in Dubai? In, I, I, it was during my beginning of my career. So I had already moved. I've been here, but it was between Saudi and here. So we met, I think, for the event in Nepal. Yes. Right? Yes. I think that was the event. And it was a very nice event that one. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. When I was in my previous life, I like to call it as a fashion designer. I so, still love those dresses. Yes, it was a beautiful journey. It was a beautiful journey. So yes, that's where I met you and uh, someone was interviewing you. Yeah. You were wearing this beautiful Meher and Radima outfit. Red. Red outfit, yes. yes. I wanted to wear it today, but it's in Saudi. <laughs> oh, that would have been lovely. Yeah. Memories would come it's back. It's one of my favorites. So, and I heard your story for the first time ever. I know you were on shows and you were on interviews a lot, but in person, that's when I heard your story and I was moved Thanks. and I was, I was in awe of you actually. I was like, can you be that courageous? I mean, can we be that courageous Absolutely. to take that step and move out, breaking the myth, doing and living how you want to on your terms? And what does that mean? Absolutely. It was, I... The, the, the thing that gave me the courage to, to speak and to be public about my journey is women like you. It's stories like you. Being able to inspire others to live their own dreams was the reason why I continued and now I'm in media actually. I don't do as much sports as I used to. I still do sports as a passion, but I do media now and I, 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 have, a more, I have a bigger role in media because of stories like yours. I want to try and help and inspire others to find their dreams. I'm very honored that I had a, a small part in your journey. No, it was absolutely amazing. But how did you, just a little bit of your feelings, your inside, how did you feel, you know, was there fear? Was there feeling of self-critique, self-judgment? How am I going to do this? Because I know you did tell me that yeah. initially, of course, your parents were not very happy with your decisions to move out and do these big things, which was also life-threatening. Yeah, it was hard. So Absolutely, I was, I was afraid. People misunderstand the meaning of bravery. They think... If you are brave, then there's no fear. But the truth is, bravery is being afraid and still doing something anyway. So I was definitely afraid. And it was a very um, uncertain part of my life. And I didn't know what was happening. But I knew that I was meant to go on this journey. I knew that I was destined for more than what was in front of me. So I was afraid, but it was worth it. Awesome. So what is living curiously for you? And how has it changed over these years since your early adventures? Living curiously is my life motto. One of my life mottos is to not be bored, is to not uh, be tired of exploring the world. I believe that we're all born curious creatures, but as we grow, you lose that sense of curiosity and that's what makes people bored. Um, it has evolved in, in the form as the form of curiosity. It was just um, sports and mountaineering and that was it for a while. And then after that, it became media, it became uh, public speaking, it became events. So it, 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 it has evolved over the years and curiosity will always have a fluid form. 
And I think that's what I love about being curious. It leads you to different places. It leads you down different avenues and makes you discover who you are. And so many people lose that sense of curiosity. That's amazing. And how does it have a role to play with comfort zone? Mm. You know, I talk a lot about comfort zone yeah. in my coaching sessions and with my uh, speaking opportunities that, you know, it's very important to get out of your comfort zone and do things. I feel it's very similar. What do you, what, what is your take on it? There's magic outside the comfort zone. I think people misunderstand what it means to be comfortable and the comfort zone. You can be comfortable and still challenge your comfort zone. Because you can have that comfort and go to it when you are tired of being an adventure person. It's okay. You can get tired sometimes. But you have to have that sense of being able to step outside your comfort zone. That's when the magic happens. That's when you discover so many different aspects of who you are, so many different things. How do you know if you're good or bad at something if you don't try it? And how do you try something if you don't have the courage to go out and explore something new? So a lot of people misunderstand being comfortable and comfort zone. And that's that's a very, very important thing to differentiate. Because um, a lot of say, people say, oh, I'm comfortable where I am. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You can stay comfortable where you are. True. But can you challenge your comfort zone by going to a country you've never been to before or trying something that you've never experienced before? You will never know who you are unless you challenge yourself. And that's, that's what my... Uh take is from the comfort zone uh, lesson that I always talk about. It's like you will never know who you are Absolutely. truly if you don't get out of your comfort zone. There's so, so. Much, there's so much out there that we don't know about, that we aren't aware of. And you need to have the courage to go after it. It's not going to come to you. You won't discover exactly. that you are a mountaineer sitting on your couch. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? You yes. won't know if you are a great painter if you don't get up and paint. You won't know if you're a great writer if you don't pick up a pen and write. And to add to that, it's okay to be bad at something when you start. No one's a pro when they start. Yes. No one. Everybody starts something badly. It's the time and effort you put in to improve. So that's another thing that people are afraid of, is they are afraid to fail. They're afraid to be bad. Nobody's yes. a pro when they come out of the womb. <laughs> you, you slowly build. Yes. There are a few rare cases of suddenly people become savants in, in things. But practice and, and the courage to be bad at something is something that people don't realize is super important. Very well said. I agree. And I say the same thing when I talk to my clients about coaching, yeah. uh, about meditation. Sorry. Meditation. Because meditation, everybody's like, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm one of, I can't meditate. <laughs> I, I mean, I've tried, medita I've tried meditating the classic way. I don't know how to do the classic way of meditation, but when I climb and when I do a sport, that's my meditation. That's my form of meditation. Yeah, exactly. But like you rightly said, everything is a practice. The more we hours we put into it, the better we become. You're not going to love everything you do. Yes. You're not going to excel in everything you do, but you need to be able to find something that gives you passion. I agree. Totally. So you want to live in the world where there are no longer any firsts for Arab women to achieve? Because for women, not just for Arab women, for any women. For any woman. <laughs> any woman. So you want to live in a world where there are no longer any firsts for women to achieve because they have done it all. What a beautiful mission. How does one discover a mission? I think every single person on this earth has a mission. You are responsible to find it. And the only way to find it is to go after something that challenges you, that inspires you, that intrigues you. You have to go and find it. It doesn't happen. It's so rare that you'd be sitting at home and something suddenly, an epiphany happens. You know, And even most of those epiphanies are the beginnings of journeys. Even if we do think, oh, I've decided to become an artist. That's an idea that can come on the, on the couch. But implementing it needs you to move and needs you to get out and needs you to, to have the courage to be vulnerable enough to try something new. So absolutely, you have to go out and find it. It's, not, it's easier said than done. You can easily say, yes, you have to go and find it, but it, it, an epiphany will not come to you in a box that says epiphany. <laughs> yeah, it, it's absolutely. not as obvious as, you know, surprise, it's an epiphany. Epiphanies come between the moments between the, you know, there are little moments between the big moments that change your life. And you have to be in tune, you have to be aware, you have to be open to the world and to the universe and to yourself to find these things. Because most people don't do that. Most people think, you know, I, you, you're born, you grow up, you finish school, you go to college, you get a job, you get married. They, they assume that this is life's journey. 
but that's according to whom. That's not what you want, for example. And you should be able to find what it's, what's the meaning of life for you. And it's hard. And not many people get to do that. But when you do, it's magic. When you do, when you do find that moment, the person lights up. And we come alive. You, you come alive, <laughs> and you you have experienced. This. I have experienced, and this. I have experienced this, and and I can see, I can meet a person and talk to them for two minutes, and I can know if that person has that oomph, that spark in life. Without it, I so agree. Without it, there is a light that's missing in the eyes. Absolutely, I so agree. So I was in fashion. I didn't know. I had no idea I would embark on a journey of being an author, yeah. being a speaker, being a coach. But how how afraid you were when you started? Oh my God, I can't tell you. I was so outside how my comfort zone. How many times did you think before? Can I do this? this? How many yes. times did you doubt yourself before? And it's only those that have the courage to go against their own doubt that find greatness. Absolutely. I agree. I so agree. I thought I would never be able to do it. And now I'm writing my second book. Yeah. And it's magical, <laughs> yes. And it's I was so magical. happy when, when Mehra sent me her book. She sent it to me and I'm like, yeah, you go, girl. Like, I was so, <laughs> so proud of you to be able to, to find that. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Yes, yes, but it's, you yeah, know, like you said, it's about believing in yourself. It's yeah. about understanding there's more to life. Courage. It's about pursuing it. Yeah. It's, it's, you, your mission will only come to you when you're seeking it, like they Absolutely. say. Absolutely, you can't expect things to happen when you're not moving for them. To happen like a lot of people say life is luck yeah luck is a big part of it but you need to be in that place for you to get the luck the right place at the right time, time for, you, for the luck to come to you you need to work enough in order for luck to happen i i agree totally so i think it's 50 50 i think yes. it's hard work and luck yes because you can be the hardest working person on the earth and have bad luck and then you could be the normal kind of working person and have good luck and then you can be the golden ratio, which is good luck and hard work. And yeah. then that's the that's, And then the sad ratio of bad luck and doesn't work. So try to yeah. find that. Try to find that balance. I agree. Work I so agree. for luck to find you. Yes. Very well said. Work for luck to, to find, find you. you. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so how do you stay focused on your goals? How do I stay focused on your goals? This is a very good question, especially after COVID, because life has changed after COVID. Uh, allow yourself time to be happy, to be sad, to be content, to be not content. Allow yourself to go through all the emotions. You will never be 100% of anything all of the time. It's impossible. So allow, allow yourself to go through the notions of being inspired or not inspired or motivated or not motivated. Allow yourself to have all the emotions. But... Never ever let the days that you're down be the majority. Let them, sorry, never ever let the days that you're feeling down be the majority. Let the days that you are happy to always be the majority and the down days to be the minority. Feel everything you need to feel, but choose positive side. Because we're human, it's impossible that someone feels happy all the time. I it's agree. impossible to feel motivated all the time. And there are some people like, no, I don't allow this to myself. Like, that's not healthy. That's not realistic. So yeah. be, be fair. I have days where I'm completely not in the mood for anything. I just sit at home and people are so surprised. Like, how can you do that? You're so hyper. I'm like, yeah, I'm hyper like 90% of the time, but I have 10% where I just want to sit and relax and I allow myself yeah. the 10% of time. So just be honest with yourself. You don't have to constantly be on the hustle, on the go. You'll burn out. You'll burn out super fast. So just be fair to yourself. Go, go through the notions and make sure that the days that you are higher and happy and content are the days that you can't count. And the low days are the days that you can't count because they are very, very little. I agree. So that's a learning for me. I constantly do things and I don't allow myself to Have relax to. and just unwind. Yeah. I don't allow myself. And I really want to do that. Because you feel guilty when you don't do anything. Because I'm so used to it. Because most people feel guilty to just do nothing. That's a, that's a realization for me. That's like an aha moment. More, a lot of people, I get that too. When I'm just sitting down and I have nothing to do, I've done all the work, all the emails are done, all of the shoots are done, all of the interviews are done. And then I sit at home and I like binge a, a show. I'm like, do I have something to do? No, you don't. You, don't. <laughs> you have earned this time of laziness. You've earned this time. You've earned yes, this time of laziness. I agree. But, but don't let that be 
don't abuse that. Don't be constantly lazy and constantly, you know, lack of motivation. Very well said. Because that can be a problem too. So allow yourself to have that space and, you know, be lazy sometimes. It's okay. Yeah. But not majority. Yes. Because it's, it's not healthy. I agree. I agree. I need to allow myself that those allow few moments yourself. more often, I think. Just relax. And just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. I certainly need to do that. So how important has self-love been on your journey? Oh my God. Self-love, I think, is my armor. I grew up in a time where, you know, big fluffy hair was not cool. You had to have like nice straight hair. Big eyebrows were not in style. You had to have thin eyebrows. And I just wanted to be me. And I refused to conform. I refused. And that little girl grew up into a woman that refuses to conform to. I don't want to be like anybody else. I don't want to be a cheap copy of someone else. I want to be the best version of who I am. And that has saved me so much. That has saved my character so much over the years because I work in media. So it's very easy to fall under the trap of wanting to conform. Um, and self-love is my absolute armor. It's really hard to be a public person who, who sees everything. If you're, a, if you're a big, big superstar, a major superstar, I don't think you really care because you don't really see the hate. Because it's not, unless it's a big bad article, you don't really see. But when you're a micro star or when you're a micro famous person, then it's you're more vulnerable, I believe. Because you don't have people around you that buffer. I don't have a, a team of 100 people that are my publicists and my PR. It's just me. But I'm still known, so people think that they have the right to say whatever they want to me. So you have to manage that. You have to be able to accept people's opinion and people's views against you and still love yourself and not fall under the trap because it's so, so dangerous. I'm so stubborn about this, this topic to the extent that I have broken my nose three times or four times. I lost count because of sports and car crash, but whatever. I have to fix my nose. I have a deviated septum. I actually have a, a broken septum on my right side. And I'm so scared about changing my face that I haven't had the surgery. I, I keep putting it out. <laughs> it's been 10 years, more, maybe 15 years. I have to fix it because I have a deviation and I'm like, there's a percentage of my face changes. Yes, I don't want to do it. I just, I'm so scared about conforming and fitting and, you know, falling under the trap of wanting to look like someone else. I actually have a medical thing. I have to fix my nose and I'm too scared of it. So I have to find the courage to actually not feel like I am conforming if I have a medical problem. But do you see how, to what yeah. extent... It, it messes with your brain when you constantly see media people telling you you're too fat, you're too thin. You're too, it really messes with how you think of yourself. And uh, you really need to have thick skin and courage and self-love because you can pay millions of millions of dollars to try to look like something that isn't real. And if you aren't happy inside, nothing on the outside will help you be happy. Nothing, nothing. Very well I've said. I've met some of the most beautiful women you'll ever meet and they are not beautiful to me because they're not happy, because they're not content, because they're constantly comparing themselves with someone else and constantly trying to be someone that they aren't. There is beauty in meeting someone that is confident and happy in who they are. And that's what I always tell people who ask me advice about this is that love yourself in order for others to love you. And it's really hard nowadays, especially with social media. It is so difficult. I agree. And we are our worst critics. And you see yourself all the time and you critique yourself all the time. But you have to love yourself for anyone else to love you. I agree. I so agree. So I obviously lived with that perception that somebody else will complete me. Yeah. But when I realized that it's me who has to complete to. me it was life-changing and that's yeah. the journey I embarked on and started writing the book and starting st actually found my mission and realizing that you you all you need is what is in you it's so it's so cliche and it's so corny but it's true it's I so always true. tell tell people travel on your own have a, a meal on your own lunch or dinner on your own. go to the movies on your own and go to a museum on your own Go, do these four things on your own. Something cultural, something that's food, something that is you know, like a movie and something that is, is scary like travel. Do these things on your own. If you're happy on your own, you're ready to be happy with someone else. If you're miserable or not used to be, 
you find your entertainment in others, then you have something missing in yourself. You need okay. to be able to sit your, with yourself in a coffee shop in Paris, have a meal and be happy on your own. I and agree. then you can be happy with anyone else. So I had read a quote. Um, if you are in love with who, who you are, then you're never lonely. Absolutely. You're alone, but you're not lonely. It, there's a difference between being alone and lonely. Yes, Because exactly. that, That's what people also mistake. You know, with, it's the same as comfortable, uncomfortable. They think they're the same thing. They're not. You can be completely alone and not lonely. And you can be in a couple exactly. and be lonely. lonely yes. So loneliness is the sense of being alone. It's not a physical thing of you being actually alone. Yes. It's a feeling. Yes. So you can be with a, around a group of people. You can be a couple and still be lonely. If you, you haven't can, worked on yourself, if, you if you're not happy. Or the relationship. Yes. And you can be alone and not and, lonely. Yes. And be super happy. And be super happy. So there's a big difference. You know, not every single person is lonely and not every person, a couple is, you know, not alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Loneliness and alone, <clears throat> you have to know the difference between the two because you need to know you're not a lonely person. Yes. Because if you are, no amount of, you know, person, love, travel, things you buy. Material things, material things, yes. Nothing, nothing will, will complete fill that you void. And fill you, yes. Because the loneliness you feel is self-made. Yes. It comes from yourself. There's other factors that come outside. Sometimes it's bad houses, bad couple, relationship. There are things that add to the loneliness. But in the end, you, are, you feel lonely because of how you are, not because of someone else. I agree. And no one can fix that. What is broken in you cannot be fixed by someone or by someone anyone else. else. You it can have people you. that help you and guide yes. you. Yes. You can have professionals that help you dissect. It's like, imagine a car, you know, imagine a car that you, you've been driving your whole life. You know how to make the car work. But if something breaks in the car that you don't know, you have to go to a professional that helps you fix the car. It's your car, but you still have to go to a professional. And then it's a simple example. It's the same thing with your emotions and your brain. It's yours. You've had it your whole life. But if something is not working right, you have to have someone help you fix it. Yes. But that person cannot actually fix the problem. You have to decide to fix it. You can go to, you know, you can go to the best mechanic on earth. And if you still do the same mistake in the car, the car is still going to have a problem. Yeah. So you need to change your attitude in order to fix the problem. I agree. Totally. Totally. It's you. It's, it's we you. have to do the work they give you the to tools be able to. Yes. To fix yes. it. Yes. But you have to actually... Until we don't do the work, nothing will move. You'll nothing never, will shift. You will not change into being a never. better version of yourself. You'll never, you'll never be able to help someone that doesn't want to be helped. You yes. Know? Absolutely. And it's hard. It's so hard for someone to accept their flaws. It's so hard for someone to accept their insecurities. It's really hard to put up a, put up a mirror and look at your... And look at your flaws and accept it. But that's the, that's the healthiest thing you'll ever do to yourself is to be honest with with what you have. Yeah, it's all about the relationship we have with ourselves. Yeah. So like you rightly said, the relationship we have with ourselves determines the quality of every other relationship in Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And how has that been for you? Like what would you, you know, your ex- what would you be your experience share with the listeners right now that, you know, how, how can we work on the relationship with ourselves to become a better version of ourselves and impact all other areas of life? Accept because your flaws. Accept who, your flaws. Uh, accept that there are people who love you will tell you harsh truths. But at the same time, don't accept people's critique if they don't know you. But there are people around you that love you that will tell you, by the way, what you did was not nice or you need to move you need to improve this. It's healthy for you to accept that, to know what your flaws are. It's okay to have flaws. It's, no one's perfect. So I think the best thing I did was to accept uh, and work on the things that I needed to work on. It really has helped a lot. Yeah. So the relationship we have with ourselves determines the quality of every other relationship Absolutely. in life. Yeah. And like you also touched upon is vulnerability. How important is vulnerability to you? You can be vulnerable, but not weak. You know, a vulnerability is, doesn't necessarily mean that you're weak. You have a vulnerability, but that doesn't make it, that doesn't make you a weak person. Again, another example of weakness and vulnerability, like they think that being vulnerable 
makes you a weak person. No, I can have a vulnerability and be a strong person. And I actually believe that vulnerability is a strength. Vulnerability yeah. is a strength we have when we are able to be open and authentic. Yeah. It can be a virtue. It can, it, it can be uh, what makes you different to other people. It can be uh, the best thing about you. It can be the best thing you've improved in yourself. So being vulnerable is, is not always a bad thing. It's just uh, a vulnerability that, that hinders your ability to love others and hinders others' ability to love you then that's something that you need to work on. You know, when it's a negative thing that needs to work on, listen, when people tell you, you need to improve this, you need to improve that. In my case, I, I always get defensive when people critique me. It's because of years and years and years of being critiqued and years and years and years of being pushed to be a specific kind of person. So sometimes when someone tells me something in a, in a good hearted way, I get defensive. I am like, but it's none of your business. I get I get a little bit like like this. I shut up myself and I push everybody. And I've learned to accept that this is one of my vulnerabilities. I get the I don't like people critiquing some of the things that I do, especially how I look and how I dress. And I don't think someone has the right to tell me, unless I am absolutely rude, which I'm not. No one has the right to come and tell me why did you do this or why no, are you dressed this way. But sometimes someone tells you something out of love or out of care, yeah. you shouldn't be defensive. And that's one of the things I have worked on all over the last couple of years, because I realized that not everybody's out to get you, you know. Absolutely. Not, they not, could be good interest at Yes, heart. not everybody's out to stab you. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And automatically, I put my shield up. <laughs> so I've learned to be vulnerable in allowing people to tell me, you know, ah, you should do this, you should, don't be so defensive, don't be... But in my defense, again, I've been defensive a little bit. I have, I have, I had to do, I had to be defensive a little bit over the years because I was critiqued very harshly for being different, for being bold, for being outgoing. So I developed the sense of, of you know, shield up immediately. Um, it saved me, it served me in my life as a young girl, but now I don't need to be as defensive. So accept that, so. that you don't have to be as defensive and accept that people can give you critique without hurting you. So this is Acceptance. my piece. Yeah, yes. my piece with myself. I had to work on that. Amazing. Fantastic. It's so beautiful to learn from Thank experiences you. and share each other's story because I think life is a lifelong learning. Absolutely. And everything teaches you and makes you a better version of yourself. So what's next for you from your... Oh, what's next? Honestly, COVID has humbled many people's plans and stuff. Um, it was amazing uh, the, this year and last year have, have been amazing but COVID really changed a lot of my plans so what's next honestly I just want to um, expand my, my, my voice to have a more um, let's say uh, maybe a more clear footing in media I would love to go back to TV I had TV I used to do TV before and then COVID happened so I don't know, for now I'm just trying to, you know, find my footing. I did radio for a while. I still do adventures. I went a few months ago, I did my 10 year anniversary of my first mountain. And maybe next year I want to do my 10, my 10 year anniversary of Everest. 10 years already has passed. Wow, 10 years. 10 years has already passed next year. Um, so for now I'm just exploring and trying to find something new. Um, I love media, I think it's great. It's a new kind of mountain, it's a new kind of challenge. But uh, it's a journey and I just want to enjoy it and take it as, as, uh, as it comes and just to be happy. When I was little, they used to ask me in school, what do you want to be when you grew up? And I used to say happy. That's, I, I think I that's important. Happy. That's so important. That, actually, that's the essence, right? Essence. We can make just money, reach somewhere, and, but happy. still our core will be we want to be happy. You can be happy as, you know... A millionaire. You could be happy as a farmer. You could be happy exactly. as an astronaut. You can be, but you need to be happy. You need yeah. to find happiness. And like, and then I would say I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be a veterinarian. Wanted, the truth is, I just want to be happy and content and true and live my life with my own rules and my own, my own, uh, my own way. Not to live life for someone Beautiful. else. And it's not easy, huh? we yeah. say we say it, but it's not easy. Yeah, we fall under so many pressures and so many different things that sometimes we we lose who we are along the way. So I would love to, you know, 
live to 102 and say that I live my life my way. I live my life for me. And that's the true dream of just having an awesome legacy and just to be happy. And to be the same person, the, be the best compliment anyone has ever, they tell me is that you're the same, you haven't changed, you know. I've worked in so many different projects and brands and I don't want to change. I want to be who I am. I always want to be Raha, you know, chilled. I, I always want to be the person that anyone can call me at any time and I'm, I'm there. I don't want to ever change that. I just want to be me. So. That's amazing. I mean, I, I know you haven't changed. I've known you since a while now. A while yeah. now. Yeah, just after your summit, if I may, like about nine years or eight yeah, years. Yeah, it's been amazing. And yes, you haven't changed. So stay awesome. Stay Thank blessed. You. Uh, stay authentic. Thank you. Uh, and I think stay you, I want to say. So thank you again. Thank you for, for having me. For honoring this us this show and this show. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here, sharing your experiences with openness and authenticity. I mean, I've always loved you. I will continue to love you and so many blessings and love. And thank you again. Thank you so much, man. This was lovely. Oh, thank Yay. you. So thank you for listening to this episode of the Come Alive podcast with Raha Muharak. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I loved being part of it. If you've enjoyed the show, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcast and Spotify and like, subscribe, hit the notification button on YouTube. See you on the next episode. Thank you and lots of love.